I just, I can't do permanent. I'm the kind of person, I need to have options when it comes to my puzzles. <laughs> I wanted to share with you really quickly something that I have been doing after I've completed my puzzles. And the reason why I've started doing this is because, well, we all know how I feel still about the Haunted Mansion puzzle. This is why I vowed not to make the same mistake again. And if you haven't seen that one, I'll leave a link down below to the video. But in another video that I did, which was my Buffalo review with the Supper Call puzzle, I did mention that I was going to look up ways that I can save my puzzle so that I didn't have to go through the same torment of destroying them after completing them. And to no surprise, there were tons of ideas that I found on YouTube from other puzzle YouTubers who know well, let's be honest, way more than I do. And I got a lot of great ideas from you guys as well. So thank you. Now with saving my completed puzzles, I made it a point to go about it in a way where it didn't make the last final product a permanent thing. I just, I can't do permanent. I'm the kind of person, I need to have options when it comes to my puzzles. I want to be able to hang my puzzle if I want to, and I want to be able to change them out when I want to as well. If I'm feeling crazy, I want to be able to crumble my puzzle up and start over again. Heck, I want to even be able, if I'm feeling a bit wild, to take my puzzle, lay it on a random table on the house, and stare at it all day long if I feel like it. In other words, I want to be able to do whatever the heck gives me my jollies at the moment. And I encourage you to feel the same way about your puzzles because you're the one who put in all the time and all the hard work into completing them. So is it not fair that you should be able to do whatever you want with them afterwards? So there are many different things you can do with a completed puzzle. They sell puzzle glue. They even have glue sheets that you stick on the back of your puzzles. There is another method, which I think was by, um, I saw Karen Puzzles do it. She's a genius. Karen Puzzles, she flips the puzzle over and she puts masking tape on the back of it to keep it all intact. And then you just hang it up that way or you put it in a picture frame. So the method that I decided to go with, and it's kind of like, well, I'm not going to say a hodgepodge. I'm sure, you know, many people do this, but it was basically using some of your ideas with Karen puzzles idea. Now I've used this method on my Buffalo Supper Call video and I'm going to show you that footage right now. So what I basically did was I broke the puzzle into sections that were about the same size and then I stored it stacked up like sheets on top of each other and then put them inside the box that they came in. But the difference here was I skipped the step of putting masking tape. Now I know masking tape doesn't tend to be very adhesive. Did it make it a little harder? Yes. Did it make it a little more risky? Yes. So the Buffalo Games puzzle was a success. I can pull the sheets out, I can lay it out. It holds very well together. I think it has a lot to do with the thickness of the pieces and the perfect snap. It all fits very nicely together and it's just like, that stuff doesn't come apart as you can see here. Now hit the like button if you tried to save your completed puzzles this way. And if not, let me know down below if you just crumble them up and call it a day or you use a different method. Now this is another thought that I had. Would this method work for any puzzle brand? So I have not actually put away my Cinderella bringing the tree home to Mandy's house puzzle yet. So I figured why don't we see how this method works for a Seiko branded puzzle? And I don't know if it's going to be successful or not. So let's try that together. All right. So here is the completed puzzle. I have my box here ready to go. So what I did initially for supper call was I kind of like just measured out a corner of the puzzle with the box and kind of counted about how many pieces long ways and width ways. I would have to pull out from this puzzle to see what would fit in here comfortably. You don't want to make it too many pieces because what I noticed was when I did supper call was if it was too big, the tabs would kind of stick to 
too tight against the upper or the walls of the box and you know you don't want to risk damaging your puzzle pieces so always go smaller or less pieces if you know if it feels too snug let's see here what we measure out to So it's looking like 10 by 10 is going to work, but that can change because this is straight edges. This is going to fit a little nicer in the box. You have to be more careful once you get towards the middle of the puzzle. We might have to go 9 by 9 or 9 by 10 on those particular areas. So after you've counted, you want to slowly pull apart the pieces without basically um, making a huge mess. You're going to have pieces that kind of pop out and you're going to have to probably put them back in, but... You know, that's a lot easier than putting back a thousand pieces together. All right, let's move on. All right, guys. Um, this is already proving to be more difficult than I expected. So for some reason, the top didn't really want to cooperate. I'm trying to make sure I have this on camera as well. Oh, jeez. Um, is this not going to work for Chaco? This is very likely. Oh, oh no. I don't want to destroy this. Oh no. Why? I have to think. Let's try it again. This, these top pieces, they just, they just come out. There's like no, oh my God. Like it won't even grab the other ones around it. Oh my goodness, guys. I don't think we're going to be very successful here. Oh my god, this is heart-wrenching. No, <laughs> please, no. Um, all right, I have to think. Maybe like a sheet of paper or something? Maybe put something under it? Okay, I'm thinking maybe try using this to kind of guide the pieces all together. Oh, jeez. I'm trying, guys. We're in this together. Oh, no. No, why is it not working? It's falling apart. Okay, let's try something else. Okay, I'm not giving up. I found some cardstock paper, so it's a little, you know, a little more sturdy. I don't know if it's gonna make a difference. This is a secret puzzle after all, but, oh gosh. I don't know, I'm, oh no, they're popping, the darn popping pieces. Oh my goodness. Guys, I don't think this is gonna work for Seiko. There's no way. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. This is a total fail. There's no way I'm gonna save this whole puzzle without it falling to pieces like this. It's not even worth it. This is like, I must, I must seem really sad. I'm just trying to, I keep putting it back together again. Like it's gonna make things better, but I think this is hopeless. Look at this. Oh my gosh. No. Nope. 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 This is... This is so crushing. I don't know if I can bear this. What am I gonna do? I'm trying to stick this anywhere along the puzzle. And if it, if it just hits an edge, just... In the slightest wrong way, it, it just, it just combusts. I've mentioned before, and um, I think I started with the Snow White Seiko puzzle about popping pieces, and I think um, the Rapunzel puzzle as well. Seiko piece puzzles are not very, um, let's be honest here, they're not the absolute greatest. Oh my God. This is sad. I'm still trying. There's no way. This is not possible. What would happen if I got some of it? Let's see. Ugh. Oh my God. It's so weak. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. No. I don't know why I'm still trying to save it. It's a lost cause. Oh. It won't even hold. Why? Oh my gosh. Well guys, this is the results of trying to save a Seiko puzzle.
Now let's do a little comparison here. I mean, come on. Look, this is buffalo. That's two sheets I'm holding. Look at this solid. This, mm, this clearly shows you the difference in quality between buffalo brands and Seiko brand. What are your thoughts on this disaster? Because um, I'm a little bit in shock right now. Well, I tried, right? Now the one puzzle that I did recently that I did not even dare attempt to save after I completed it was the Dollar Tree Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse puzzle with them on the boat. Because as I had said in the video review, just by looking at the puzzle or breathing on it, it, it would fall apart. So yeah, I thought that would be kind of pointless to even try. Now, in the coming videos, I do plan to try the other methods of saving your completed puzzles. As much as I don't want to glue any of my puzzles permanently, I do plan to try it on maybe one. I think as well, I'm going to keep trying this method on all the different puzzle brands that I start completing and seeing which ones work best and which ones don't using this method. So be sure you're subscribed so you can check out how I go about those processes and if they're successful or not. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and big thank you for all the comments and feedbacks that you leave me. It's always fun to read. I will see you in the next one.